Welcome to Spotlight on Migraine, hosted by the Association of Migraine Disorders. Join us for fresh perspectives by medical experts and advocates as we explore the spectrum of migraine and dig deeper into this complex disease. Thank you to our 2023 education sponsors. In this episode, Dr. Saeed Ashina talks to us about medication overuse headache, also known as rebound or medication adaptation headache. He discusses how it occurs, who is more likely to develop it, and how to prevent or break the headache cycle. Hello and welcome to Spotlight on Migraine. I'm your host, Molly O'Brien. Today, we're going to talk about medication overuse headache. You might also know it as rebound or medication adaptation headache. To help us learn all about medication overuse headache, I'd like to welcome our guest, Dr. Sait Ashina. Dr. Ashina is an assistant professor of neurology and anesthesia at Harvard Medical School. He's the director of the Comprehensive Headache Center at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. Dr. Ashina, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. And thank you for the kind introduction and invitation uh, to talk about this very interesting topic. It's so interesting. And it, it seems like medication overuse is this vicious cycle that I feel like more people within the migraine and headache community are learning about and becoming aware of. So we want to know we want to know about it all. So if we can start off by chatting today, just explain what is medication overuse headache? Yes, of course. Uh, so medication overuse headache was first described by Peterson and Horton in 1951 at Mayo Clinic. And they have called these conditions with different, different names. Uh, this condition had names of rebound headaches, drug overuse headaches, drugs induced headaches, medication misuse, or medication adaptation headache. But in 1988, the International Headache Society proposed the criteria for medication overuse headaches and called it a secondary headache disorder. Secondary headache means that there are headaches which are arising as a result of underlying medical condition in contrast to the primary headache disorders. So it could be problem with the neck injury, sinus infection, and the worst case, tumors, for example, causing the secondary headaches. So over the years, uh, the diagnostic criteria for uh, medication overuse headaches have evolved. And the current classification requires at least 15 or more days with the headaches per month, along with the use of specific acute headache uh, medications or treatments exceeding certain thresholds for a minimum of three months uh, with, in patients with pre-existing headache disorders. It is very interesting. So medication overuse headache occurs when the pain-relieving medications or anti-migraine drugs are used too frequently or excessively to treat ongoing headache attacks. And it's very important to differentiate from the prophylactic treatments because these medications we take on a daily basis to prevent the headaches from coming. Uh, so surprisingly, the very medications which initially provide relief from headache can actually trigger subsequent headaches uh, if the relief is too often or given too often, uh, which is counterintuitive a little bit. And so to receive this diagnosis, as I, as I mentioned, you need to have at least 15 days uh, per month uh, with the headaches uh, occurring for at least three months. And along with these headaches, patients can also experience symptoms of nausea, vomiting, sensitivity to light and sounds, irritability, difficulty concentrating, insomnia, restlessness, and sometimes constipation. Okay. And like you said, it's tough. It's almost like a catch-22 because you're taking the pain medication because you have headache, but then taking pain medication too much can actually cause headache. So frustrating. Can you explain how rebound or medication overuse <laughs> headache actually happens, how it occurs? Yeah, so the pain relievers and anti migraine medications can effectively alleviate the headaches when taken as needed. However, in patients with primary headache disorders or other headache disorders, for example, with migraines or tension type headache, they, this patient should be cautious about using these medications excessively uh, because taking these medications on two or more days per week can actually trigger medication overuse headaches. And, you know, as you mentioned, it's very interesting and very counterintuitive and fascinating why this is happening, but the exact underlying mechanisms for medication overuse headaches are not fully understood. But there are several hypotheses. Uh, it's believed that medication overuse can affect the neural pathways involved in a primary headache disorder, particularly in those occur occurring with migraines. Genetic factors may play a role. Certain gene variations are associated with metabolic abnormalities. Uh, we call them like serotonergic, dopaminergic transmissions. Uh, they kind of involved in the uh, processing of chemicals, 
and even the pathways involved in drug dependence have been involved in 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 this this headache. Uh, we have also looked at neuroimaging studies, and these studies have shown that uh, there are structural and functional, even metabolic changes in the brains of individuals with uh, with med medicational use headaches. And uh, specific areas, for example, of the brain, like we call them, uh, they're involved in, in the pain processing and also in emotional control of the pain, like hippocampus, pedagogical gray, we call it uh, thalamus, cerebellum, singular cortex. Those areas are... Uh, interestingly, are showing alterations in patients with medication overuse headache. And we also know that there is some sort of the cortical excitability, so excitability of the cortex of the brain, the outmost layer of, of, the, of the human brain, and which makes the patients vulnerable to develop these headaches. And finally, what happens is when the patients overuse these medications, uh, the central synthesization, the activation of the neuronal networks or pain pathways is happening and, and then the pain gets out of control. It becomes chronic. Okay. We do know that medication overuse headache is fairly common. Is there any one type of person or patient that is more likely to develop medication overuse or uh, more at risk to develop this? So very interesting question. So medication overuse headache affects over half of patients with chronic headaches, essentially with those who have headaches on 15 or more days per month. Uh, with an estimated uh, 59 million people worldwide are affected by these headaches. Yeah. And, you know, those occurrences rates or prevalence rates are ranging anywhere from 1% to 2% of general population. And in specialized headache centers like mine, prevalence can be as high as 50 to 80% of our patients can have this headache. And there are some studies who have shown that there are risk factors for medication overuse. In other words, if you have those risk factors, so you're more likely to develop medication overuse headache. Uh, for example, some patients with the lower socioeconomic groups uh, or certain ethnic groups have higher rates. Uh, studies have shown that. Uh, women in their 30s and 50s are more commonly affected. And, you know, medication overuse headache is a disabling condition. It's ranked among the top 20 diseases carrying years of life lost due to disability. So medication overuse occurs in a in 15% of migraine patients, uh, and it's associated with higher pain sensitivity, uh, with increased sensitivity to touch, which we call allodynia. So triptan, opioids, barbiturate users are more likely to develop medication overuse um, headache. Uh, while, for example, interestingly, people who take uh, medication like ibuprofen or non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are, have a lower likelihood. I am still cautious with these patients as well. I would recommend them to still limit the use of headache abortive medications to no more than nine to 10 days per month, if possible. Um, and it's very interesting that one of the strongest risk factors for a medication overuse are the use of opioids or barbiturate containing uh, uh, medications. Uh, there's one medication commonly known as a Fioricet, for example, in the, in as a brand name, uh, which gives a high risk of medication overuse headache. Dr. Ishina, you mentioned some medications, people who use certain medications could be at higher risk, but can you talk a little bit more about some of those drugs that can push people over into rebound or medication overuse headache? Essentially, any headache abortive medication can contribute to rebound headaches or medication overuse headaches. For instance, individuals with migraine are frequently using over-the-counter medications such as acetaminophen or, or, or Tylenol, known as Tylenol, ibuprofen known as Advil or Motrin, or naproxen known as Aleve, on more than 15 days per month, and they are at risk for developing medication overuse headaches. Uh, the same applies to uh, those taking those combination medications, for example, uh, commonly known uh, as the, the popular medication Excedrin. Uh, it has, for example, caffeine, aspirin, and acetaminophen in it. So three medications or three drugs in one drug. Uh, and these patients who can overuse these medications can be at risk for this type of headache. Uh, and another one which I mentioned to you before was the barbiturate-containing medications, uh, commonly known as a fioracid or fioranol. And additionally, individuals who use triptans like somatriptan or imitrex or ergoid alkaloids, which are like cafragot, the medication is cafragot, or opioids on more than 10 days per month are also susceptible for developing the medication overuse headaches. So now that we know a little bit more about the drugs that can push people over into rebound, can we talk about what it feels like? What are some of the symptoms of medication overuse headache? Because someone that might be living with episodic migraine, they might think, oh, I just have a tension headache today, so I'm going to take more medicine. It can be tough to determine the difference. So what are some of the symptoms of medication overuse? Yes, it's exactly right. It's sometimes very difficult to make a diagnosis. 
Um, as a matter of fact, most patients with medication overuse have either migraine or tension type headache, uh, like pic uh, picture of headaches. So they make it, or they can have both headaches. Um, they typically experience chronic and frequent headaches, and at, at times it could be even daily. And it's often super with superimposed migraine-like attacks. Uh, and in the headache centers, for example, our patients may have daily or nearly daily headaches. And uh, typically, these analgesic overuse can lead to, so to so-called diffuse or holocranial in, involving the whole head, uh, dull pressure-like pressure headache uh, with some associated migraine features or symptoms. For example, tryptan overuse can uh, cause daily migraine-like headaches and resolve briefly after you stop the medications. And with increasing headache frequency, associated symptoms like nausea, uh, vomiting, and like light sensitivity and sound sensitivity uh, may decrease in patients with, with migraine. And it could look like or sound like it's a tension headache. Um, on average, patients with uh, these headaches uh, have suffered from these chronic headaches for 20 years and have been overusing medications for at least six years, which again emphasizes the need for better awareness uh, of uh, this headache among patients and clinicians. So misdiagnosis, unsuccessful treatment attempts can contribute to irrational medication use. And um, it, it's very important to evaluate for coexisting conditions such as depression, anxiety, and other medical conditions, which can uh, guide uh, the clinicians and the patients in terms of the treatment decisions. And it's also important for clinicians, as well as for the patients, be cautious about uh, the medications. And for clinicians, especially uh, cautious about prescribing additional acute headache medications that can lead to the cycle of medication overuse headache. I think that's so important that patients and clinicians need to be aware of this and be honest with each other about what medications you're taking and how often you're taking them. Because when we know, then it helps with the diagnosis. <laughs> Um, so th the big question is, I think if someone is experiencing medication overuse headache, if you're, they're in this vicious cycle, how do you break it? How do you get out of this? And can you? Yes, we absolutely can. So medication overuse headaches usually stop when a person stops taking the headache uh, medication. It may be difficult in the beginning because once you stop your medication, the headache can get worse before it gets better. Uh, but we can offer our patients the medications to prevent the headaches and some other non-medical therapies can also be used such as biofeedback, avoiding triggers, and they can help the person to get through this medication withdrawal period. Typically, the treatment of medication overuse involves both non-pharmacological approaches, pharmacological approaches, and the pausing or discontinuing the overuse medication. And among the non-pharmacologicals, education is very important, awareness about this uh, headache. It has been shown that if you uh, implement education and awareness, it reduces the medication use and headache frequency in patients. Education can be provided in both specialist centers and primary care of offices. Even uh, pharmacists can educate the patients about uh, the overuse of medications. Uh, pharmacological treatments involve preventative treatments. Uh, it can be with withdrawal or without withdrawal, uh, withdrawal of medication. Uh, these include uh, for example, they've been shown that topiramate, onobotulinum toxin A, or commonly known as the Botox, uh, monoclonal antibodies targeting CGRP, which is the more novel drugs uh, for migraine, have demonstrated efficacy in treating uh, patients with chronic migraine and medication overuse. Uh, topiramate can be effective, but may be limited because of the side effects. And then uh, we have some other medication which can be better tolerated. In some studies have also shown that uh, blood pressure lowering medications such as beta blockers and, uh, and some calcium channel blockers can be used also in patients uh, with uh, medication overuse headache. And uh, lastly, uh, patients who can take uh, so-called tricyclic antidepressants, which is uh, uh, antidepressant medication used for prevention of migraine or tension type headache. Uh, and lastly, candesartan, uh, which is another blood pressure medication have been used in practice uh, for relieving this headache. Okay. And detoxing from any drug medication can be really challenging. Uh, it can be very difficult. So can you talk to us about people out there, two people out there who might be experiencing medication overuse headache? What are the benefits of detoxing? Because most of the time your symptoms are going to get worse before they get better. But what's on the other side of that? Give some people some hope. <laughs> 
and, and Molly, you bring, bring a very interesting point. Uh, the concept of medication of his headache and his treatment has always been an uncomfortable one for clinicians and, and, and the patients. As advice to minimize and discontinue the medications that provide acute relief, a headache seems kind of like contradicting uh, the mission of minimizing the pain. However, we know that reducing the frequency of taking acute medications has been shown to be one of the most effective treatments of medication overuse. And uh, it can be performed both in a clinic settings, but also in or outpatient settings or in the hospital settings. And discontinuation of medication in some patients with opioid and barbiturates can be challenging and uh, could be done in inpatient settings and under supervision of physician or close supervision of physician. Other factors such as, uh, as I mentioned before, psychiatric morbidities like anxiety and depression, um, uh, overuse of several other medications from classes prior to outpatient uh, treatment withdrawal therapy are also relative indications for inpatient treatment. Uh, there was actually a recent randomized uh, clinical study suggesting that withdrawal therapy or discontinuation overuse medication uh, combined with preventative medication from start of the withdrawal is the effective treatment strategy for medication overuse headache. Another approach would be switching from the overuse medication to alter alternative acute medication used with a limited frequency, and they can also help uh, to um, uh, relieve this problem. And think of preventative treatments. So preventative treatment can be initiated during the acute medication withdrawal, and and in further course regular follow-up visits. Uh, preventative uh, medical treatments are given to prevent relapses or renewed overuse of acute headache medications. We recommend the patients to keep uh, the diaries and keep stay up, keep the doctors updated about the progress and or any problems. You know. Uh, for sure, contacted physicians. And that's good to know that you can start some preventative treatments as you are detoxing from acute treatment. So that's good to know that there's not, there doesn't have to be a big gap in care. There is, there is uh, help available out there. And like you said, I think it's important for people to know that when you are detoxing from certain medications, it is best advised to be under guidance of a doctor. All right, well, let's kind of not necessarily switch gears, but I have a different question because we know that some people are at higher risk of developing medication overuse headache. What is a person with migraine or primary headache disorder supposed to do if, they're, if they need to take these types of medications? Say they have chronic pain issues, they have an injury, you know, cold medicine has acetaminophen in it, or maybe they have surgery, so they, they need opioid medication for pain relief or management. What should someone do if they need to take these types of medications um, at a higher frequency that might push them over into medication overuse? Yeah, this could be a challenging situation, uh, especially in a person who has pre-existing headache uh, uh, disorder. I think it's very important to consult with a healthcare professional, discuss your concerns as a patient, uh, talk about the specific medication needs, and uh, also get some understanding about the underlying uh, conditions. Uh, in that way, the doctor can give some sort of like personalized guidance and develop the plan how to manage the pain. It is important to keep to the recommended dosages to avoid the risk of escalating the medications and uh, stick to the guidelines and uh, if this concerns the physicians and uh, if the patients experience severe pain, address that. It is very important to explore alternative treatments, for example, non-medication alternatives to pain relief. For example, if the patient has knee pain, for example, or back pain and is in need to take acetaminophen on a daily basis or another um, analgesic, uh, in that situation, the patient can discuss with his or her primary care physician about any other referrals, for example, to physical therapy or the pain physician as well to discuss, for example, treatments with interventional treatments like blocks, et cetera. And uh, so it is very also, uh, it's also important to, I'll give a little pause. It is also important to consider preventative uh, strategies. So as I mentioned before, so if there is a high risk of overuse because the patient have to take uh, acetaminophen every day for another problem, then consider starting the patient on preventative treatments uh, for headaches. Do you feel, you know, when you first start talking about medication overuse headache, it kind of seems like, ah, what am I going to do? But it does seem like there are 
there are strategies and ways to avoid getting into this situation. And if you do get into it, there are ways to get out. So there is help out there. There are resources out there, which is good to know and helpful to know. <laughs> Um, absolutely, absolutely. I'm sorry. To, uh, absolutely, the prognosis. Uh, so the prognosis of medication use is generally good, with 50 to 70 percent of patients demonstrating improvement after withdrawal therapy, especially in combination with prevention uh, with medications. However, there may be some patients, like 10 to 40 percent, who may relapse within five years after withdrawal, and the first year is considered critical time where uh, where you need to really monitor the patient, and that can predict the long term success. Uh, and the combination of migraine and tension headache, use of opioids, longer duration of acute medication intake, and higher number of acute treatments, no improvement up to two months of, of withdrawal. Interestingly, smoking, alcohol, and patient reported poor sleep quality and just body aches can be a risk factors of relapse. So therefore, as both the clinicians and patients need to be aware of that and closely monitor for any recurrence of medications and act promptly. Okay, that's good to know. And I was going to ask, as we kind of wrap up here, do we know anything about potential long-term effects of medication overuse headache? Like if you have it once, are you more likely to get it again or more likely rebound within five years, like you were mentioning? Or say you have episodic migraine, you go into rebound, are you more likely to develop chronic migraine? Like those are just some examples, but do we know any long-term effects? Uh Yes, so if you have medication overuse and, and if the person has a medication overuse and has episodic migraine, there's high likelihood of developing chronic migraine. Uh, this has been shown in the uh, observational studies and we know that from our clinical experience. Uh, there's another problem with overusing of medications, their side effects, you know, they can affect the liver, kidneys, other than causing the, or triggering the medication overuse headache. Uh, and so this also needs to be uh, monitored for. And as I mentioned to you, the general prognosis is good, but there are some people who can relapse. And I already mentioned there are some risk factors for relapse. Uh, and in those cases, it's very important for a physician to be uh, aware of the situations and monitor the patient closely. This can be done by frequent follow-ups, for example, seeing the patients more often. Uh, especially in that critical time. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Ashina, for helping us understand and get a better comprehension of medication overuse headache. Um, I would like to say thank you once again for joining us, and uh, we really appreciate all your insight today. Thank you, Molly. Thank you for the invitation. And thanks to all of our followers for watching this episode of Spotlight on Migraine. I'm your host, Molly O'Brien. We'll see you next time. Thank you for tuning into Spotlight on Migraine. For more information on migraine disease, please visit migrainedisorders.org.